Hello guys. <clears throat> um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about a uh, new discovery that I just uh, made in uh, physics. And I'll, I'll elaborate on that right now. And it's going to sound weird, but uh, you should take inspiration from wherever it comes from. Wherever it comes from. Um, I was watching um, the quantum physics iceberg explained on YouTube. And I was basically trying to apply my weak theory model on how, you know, particles work. And by doing that, I guess I accidentally discovered um, that faster than light communication is not only theoretically possible, but how to do it. Um, I, I believe um, if, if you can find a way to do a true quantum entanglement experiment at a distance, then you will be able to effectively communicate to interstellar colonies. Like you, you no longer have to worry about, you know, like the theory of telecommunication, which is like a kind of the, kind of the big theory about why there's no independence across, across planets. Um, the reason this occurs is, is, is something that I, I just noticed. Um, if you guys are actually interested in hearing more, um, uh, let me, let me see. Oh my. So basically, I asked the question, what if particles are made of two colliding bouncing particles? That's, that's how my weak force model works. My revised uh, weak force model proposes that there are only two fundamental particles in the universe. And this is the up and the down quark. But often, word-wise, no one really remembers why the hell it was worded up quark. No one really remembers why we named it that. Why the name up? Everyone forgot about that. Because um, Feynman never asked the question. Or at least I don't know, but it seems like, because I think he said, like, the names are arbitrary. The names are not arbitrary, Feynman. The names matter. All right. So now let's think about this. So let me, let me explain what this means. So in my model, they're, they're basically all you need is the up and the down. Is basically these are the two fundamental particles. They have equivalents, you know, such as being uh, what's called. These are also equivalent to the, for some reason, I think these are equivalent to the electron antineutrinos, VE. And the other one is uh, uh, the down quark is equal to actual electrons. It's really weird, but these uh, these are what I what I have in my standard model. Um, I can, I, I'm gonna look at my notes. These are probably the wrong charges. I get these confused all the time. These are just names for these things, unfortunately. I'll kind of leave the V and the E up to interpretation because that's how this model eventually works. So let's actually ask, ask the real question, though. Well, how many particles are there? Uh, let's, let's not get to their antiparticles yet. We're just going to do basic particles. So if the standard model looks like this. There's up, there's down, there's charm, there's strange, there's top, and there's bottom. Just like that. So the reason that this is here is because this is this is the building blocks of of matter, of matter as well as like weird heavy states of matter, uh, which perhaps we cannot see because these are perhaps orthogonal to our planes of existence. But it it's really weird. So let's just let's see how this goes, and then I'll explain how this stuff on the bottom makes sense. It connects. I swear, it's it's insane. So watch this. I'm trying to give you the proof. Um, so let's follow this. We have, I'm just sorry, just looking if you guys have any questions or anything. Uh, so we have the up and the down in, in the model. Let me try to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it goes like this. So charm is equal to up, down bar and S in its core composition. I have the proofs inside my model. Who want, what the heck? Okay. Sure. Hello. Isaac, are you doing homework? No, I'm not. I'm I'm proving something new in physics. Oh, I would like to know what you're trying to prove. Oh, well, I basically, um, I'm trying to, I'm not proof, but I'm just trying to, technically it's proof. I'm just showing that this exists. It's a proof of existence is what I'm doing. You could basically write a paper on this, but I'm just trying to give the scaffold if someone wants but to. But what are you proving that exists? Uh, okay, yeah, that's a good question. Let's answer that first before trying to show you get there okay so it makes sense i'm trying to prove that that 
particles, the way the universe actually works is that particles bounce between uh, dimensions, but not dimensions. It's matter and antimatter. They bounce between this zero state, zero order state, which we know exists in physics. They bounce, and this is the equivalent, like everything does that. Every fundamental particle does that. And that we have observed, this explains the particle wave duality in physics. Turns out like electromagnetism, like you've heard of a uh, light rays, light wa- light is equal, is just electricity. You've heard, have you heard about that? Uh, yeah, I've, I've been in a science class before. Yeah. And so basically because like light is, is, um, is electromagnetic, it's basically electricity and electric an electric wave and a magnetic wave. These are just like, it's, it, these are actual waves. Like they, they oscillate between each other because they're each other's derivatives. They make each other exist. That's how light travels. But the reason why everything else doesn't do that is because it has mass. And because it has mass, you can think of it as it has, um, it's no longer being a wave. They're actually particles bouncing. Hello? Uh, any, any other questions? That was, that was, that was uh, fascinating. But so I was basically trying to prove that the universe ha- has, this, has this property. And because it has this property, you can communicate faster than light. Um, that's what I was trying to explain. So, hello, if anyone wants to know about physics or, you know, do a live and then, you know, if you want to join, just you have to click live and then just, uh, what's it called? Like, you have to go live yourself and then do an invite. I'll accept any invites. I'm going to get some water real quick. I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say because regardless, I'm just going to save the video. No, I don't believe in string theory. Not anymore. This string theory is just with, with a, it does the same thing, but it does it unnecessarily complex. It's unnecessarily complex. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's bullshit because they add extra dimensions. You don't need to add dimensions in mathematics. I, I, I discovered it in physics, in physical mathematics. The reason you don't need to add extra dimensions is because, uh, let me try to, I'm trying to remember, fuck. Because there's a you can, you can like there's like a span. So in linear algebra, there's a span. So all you need I, I think I've shown that all you need is uh so you need two vectors that are in their dimension, two two vectors that are orthogonal to those to those. You need two. And this will be uh what's what's gonna be? This is gonna be uh the, these have to be the most fundamental orthogonal things ever. We're going to, I've tried to remember in physics, uh, it's the, it's momentum and then it's position space. So basically position and velocity, those are different. And another fundamental vector basis in quantum physics is energy and we're another orthogonal and time. We know these are the current orthogonal, uh, so I can't create a wormhole. General relativity, you can, but it hasn't yet been measured. Okay, so, so here's what's going on. So we have those two as well. Those, that's another orthogonal thing that we need. Uh, but according to this information, just we, the weird thing about physics and the fundamental cosmology is that it's based on information theory. It's not necessarily based, and information theory is necessarily mathematics. But if you can simplify mathematics, which we very much well have through the solution of these equations, Maxwell's equations, grad dot E is equal to something, uh, grad uh, curl dot E, I think, um, and then dot B, and then grad B. These are Maxwell's equations. And Maxwell's equations each have different meanings. They have, they have different meanings within their appropriate vector spaces. And you have to take in these vector spaces into account. And if you do that, well, we can kind of, look, we can d- divide them into this fundamental subset. It's like you can quantize electricity, and this is probably how it can be done. So um, you're basically, this is going to be, it's, it's a gradient is parallel. So that's going to be parallel to the field of E. 
that's going to be perpendicular to the field of, of E, and this is going to be parallel to the field of, of B, so it's going to be parallel to the uh, what's it called magnetic field, and this one is going to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. But magnetic fields specifically have a direction. They have a spin. And now look at that. We can now associate an additional parameter, up and down spin. What about the Higgs field? Uh, it's, it's weird. Uh, the Higgs field, I don't know, I don't understand it well enough to basically say, if, is it even necessary? Uh, using, I'm basically trying to say every information set can be described in the manner of the particles in the standard model. Because it has existed within the standard model, an information set can be explained like this and then to this. You, it's like a weird scaling. You, you scale ideas and you can scale particles. Let me show you this real quick. So let's finish it. So charm is equal to that. And the strange is equal to U bar and D bar. The bars are the antimatter particles. However, uh, another thing in the standard model that was that has that does not currently exist but is part of my model is that we convert the the w minus and the w plus. We don't call these arbitrary particles for the weak force. Can we hit particles together to create a new element? Yes. We actually know you can do that and that's a weird thing that is like a, a known secret, I guess. If you know how to do the the standard model manipulation, you can create part. You can create, yeah, matter of your of your type, just with just with collisions. But then that gets into collision theory, and that's that's a lot that's a lot harder. So basically, now let's 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 go back to this. So the the U. I'm sorry. I'm trying to say that the W minus particle. Uh, let me try to zoom in a little bit. That'll probably help a lot. Yeah, okay, and move it to, oh, to there. So, can we travel through time like Marvel superheroes? Uh, I, I, maybe, maybe with the orthogonal one, but that's, that's possible at the end. That's, a, that's what I was trying to prove in the beginning. Uh, what was your name before? What? What? Will that ever happen? Let me, uh... You can create anything. You can theoretically create stuff in the past, but you cannot create the past unless you have a copy of the past. So, this is basically like... You do ancestor simulations. If, if you want to really do an ancestor simulation the most accurate way and the most cost-efficient way in physics, you don't do an ancestor simulation. You technically just run a code or a mathematical model. Like, we, we, we tell ourselves, and that's what, the, that's what the video was about. Like, we tell ourselves that that's the wrong way to do it when... If we know what fundamental systems are and how the, the math of fundamental systems behaves, why, why can't we just run this model for the simplifying the system? Let AI figure it out. That's exactly what we're trying to do, and I, I believe it's possible. If you give like a physicist that knows how to speak the code of the universe with an AI, like, like the GPT-3, like if you, because you know, the, the AI can write the code for you to run like a simulation. You, if you can do that, do you believe in creation? Uh, no. No. Because uh, this model actually does apply for the, for, uh, what's it called? Oh, fuck. Cosmology, though. It does. It does. It just shows that the, we need quantum computers first. This shows how to do quantum computers. 
uh, in the video I just I just saw it right now, like how to use quantum entanglement. You can you can run faster than the speed of light. You can run simulations faster than the speed of light if you know how to use uh, like somehow to use a up down like manipulation, like spin manipulation from particle physics. No thoughts as we humans create mathematics, physics, and so on to describe we interact. It's it's astounding, but uh, okay. So let's let's keep going. I'm gonna have to watch the video on with some volume so you guys can hear for reference. Any meaningful data transfer you heard. Once you measure the first particle spin, you instantly find out what the other ones is. But since the measurement result is random, you can't have any meaningful data transfer using entanglement unless you meet and communicate the results, which happens at... There, there. Because we think the results are random, you, you, you limit yourself. If, and here's the question we have to ask, and this is what I was trying to ask right here. If we say the results are random... then what do we expect? All right, tell me who the observer is. Uh, with the universe, so is understanding bias. Do animals have an observer? Uh, everything has an observer because whether or not you think it exists, it probably exists. Um, however, like, it's, it gets a little arbitrary and it gets really complicated. Basically, rocks are observers, matter is an observer, and that is how matter interacts with particles. It's always like, e like emitting particles upon a force or upon a contact. There's an emission of particles that's like the up and down. It's, it's arbitrary, it's weird, because you can keep adding particles all you want, but like, is that, is that how, that's basically like string theory. They kind of just keep adding. But is, is it necessary? We ask ourselves, like, is not everything kind of like these properties already as we have seen? Watch, we can describe, here's what, here's, because the particles can be described like this. They have, they exist, like there's like four binaries. Like there's four binaries. It seems like we live in a four, like D, universe like it's it's weird and it's it just works like this there's an up there's a what's it called so it's it's not only up it's positively charged two-thirds of an electric charge it's weird so because it's charged two-thirds of an electric charge it also has a an analogous opposite down and the down is uniquely charged minus one three and that is also analogous to the same charge that they that they have which is kind of like a degree of freedom so these are basically degrees of freedom we always call those degrees of freedom in physics because that is a variable that can change we're what do you believe about the idea that humans are just a means for the universe to observe itself? I, I do agree. Yes, we are. Like, we fundamentally are, at the end of the day, these fundamental subsets, of, like, observing that these are the fundamental subsets. It's like, it's like when you go into physics, you kind of see, like, positive minus just different charges for everything. There's just a binary. And that's what I kept trying to tell people. Like, you can't work in quantum computers if you don't think the universe fundamentally works as a binary. It either does exist or it doesn't exist. That's, that's what quantum mechanics is. It either does or it doesn't. And you try to bullshit yourself as a physicist that, oh, the, the, whether it does or doesn't exist is arbitrary. That's not a decision at all. That's not an observation at all. Feynman was bitching at you guys for not fucking realizing, like, hey... Whether or not you see the particle go through, there's nothing there at all. But that in itself is an observation. 
And because, of, because we refused to accept that that was an observation of the particle, that you could even get, you know, faster than light travel or like accurate information, because we doubted that, that kind of shows that maybe, maybe it's us that's kind of limiting our progress in physics. We're not really trusting ourselves anymore. We got a little too harsh in like not accepting theoretical physics. Is it fair to say that there are other things out there with advanced technology and more weird physics? Absolutely. I absolutely think so. Like there must be, dude. Like we, we live in, here's why. Physicists know this. We live in only this part of the universe. In the regime of the low energy mass. We're the low energy mass. We're up and down. Watch. Top is made of a charm and a charm and an anti-charm. Uh, let me, let me, wait, 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 I don't want to fuck, yeah, I, th I think it was, and, uh, bottom is made of, uh, S, and S, and an anti-S, I think, it was in my, my model, fuck, I don't want to fuck that one up, that's a serious crime, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it was weird, I don't know why, it, for some reason, the bottom cork, or I mean, the, sorry, the, yeah, for some reason, the bottom and the top corks, are made of two plus compositions of their anti, which is kind of a weird, you know, it doesn't look like it works with particle-like uh, models, but it does work if you think about it as a fundamental subset of the, of the binary. If you, if you think about it like that, it, it, for some reason, is the limit. It's, it's weird. You get me? Like, this is the limit for our regime of the universe, but... It could just as well exist higher or lower according to our, the way we measure electrons. The way we measure electrons could possibly work like this according to, according to this small revision to the standard model. It's not even a revision. It's an observation. What we think are electrons are actually owed energy states of the up and the down, which explains like the, the lightness of the mass, the light mass of the, of the electron. It, it owes energy, basically, to the universe, is how I explain electrons. They're not electrons. They're actually W minus particles that owe energy. They owe mass. It does make sense. It actually solves, like, what is the electromagnetic interaction? Like, it explains how, if you just use weak force rules for everything, it, everything works, as I've seen, as far as far as I've seen. So basically, what this means is like if you look at the the W minus. Uh, what's up, man? How's hey, what's up? Not much, not much. Just, uh, just uh, discovering something new in physics right now. Let's hear it. All right. So I was basically explaining to people that the electrons, like the the. Electromagnetic force, like the weak force that happens between the electron and the proton. So we ask, how does an electron and a proton share their information? Because that has a positive, that's a minus, and we say it has to exchange a charge, at least in, according to quantum electrodynamics and quantum field theory. So they have, to they have to exchange a photon, which is a unit of electromagnetic charge. Um, this photon exchange is, is a charged exchange according to the standard model because the photon carries charge somehow it just it, it sends charge that always bothered me that bothered me so much in um mm -hmm. in learning the uh particle physics i didn't like it i was like shouldn't it be like a an electron or some unit of charge no it's the photon it always bothered me and so um if you actually look at the electron as like an owed energy state of mass, it explains it's, it's explains that it it's actually a combination, a linear combination of an up minus an up and a owed d just d and an anti. Sorry, I'm feeling kind of nervous. That's an anti um, 
antimatter up. So it's weird. It, there's it's, there's antimatter next to a and and it owes. So it's like antimatter that owes one of our particles. You get me? We we because yeah. we live in the positive like because think about it. The proton is made of up, up and down. There's no antimatter in there. It's, it's a very stable in our universe because for some reason we live in the the I told you the up up down regime. We don't live in the antimatter portion of it. It's really weird. Right. We only exist in that portion. So now let's uh, go to what's it called? The neutron. The neutron is composed of a down, a down, and an up. That explains it, and that looks good. And like that, it, it has good information. It has up, up, down, 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 up. It's a unique object. And now let's look at the electron. You just say, oh, and then, then there's the electron. And then photon exchange. It's particle physics, that's it. There are these two fundamental subsets that explain every other interaction as we have seen in particle physics. But then when we remember back to the beginning, like, well, well, we, because we solved all these higher interactions and we know how they work, how does the electron work? Why can't we do, do the same thing with an electron? They're like, oh, well, you, 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 don't get anything, you, you don't get anything useful. There's nothing. You can't. Right. And as far as I see... Um, the electron works better if you just call it a weird state of a antimatter up and a an ode. For some reason, this D is owed. Like you, it owes this energy. Like something owes this electron energy. So it's basically an orbit. Like this is. Think about it as like because it's antimatter that's orbiting matter. But then it's, it's also an, like a unit of our matter so that it can't go with it. So it's like there's, there's hidden values of charge here that are also not being considered. And so that explains this weird duality of the electron. It has two opposite or orthogonal like, like uh, symmetries. It has a completely different symmetry to our universe. We have up and down, and this one has anti-up, the other direction, and the opposite of, of down. In other words, you can call it spin. So spin is, is a oh. weird variable that is like a loop. It's like a loop to the, to the TART universe. It's like an, it's, cool. We call it angular momentum, and that's how angular momentum fits in the standard model, but it's... That, that's kind of one of the more fascinating things. Angular momentum e- exists because we have orthogonal like vectors such as uh, magnetism and electric fields. Those are fundamentally orthogonal. They have their own planes of like existences and rules, just like I told you. Like, they have complex rules within them, the fields. But we forget that when we look at physics as like a, as, like, a physical thing. When we forget to look at physics, like what does it look like now that we say that these rules exist for each other's fields? What does this look like? And that's, that's what happens. You, you begin to see how angular momentum naturally is a consequence of it. And, uh, that lets us basically, because we can observe particle physics and we know that reactions exist for specific reasons like according to the weak force model we now know how decay works and how like how matter exchanges like basically you can do quantum chemistry with uh particle physics okay wow there's a lot to take in (laughs) So basically all the planets are kind of electrons evolving around the sun. I, I think it's kind of a creepy way to say that the planets are like units of energy to the star in a way. It's weird. 
It's like what orbits like is actually a unit of stored energy. It's weird because that's that kind of how like, edit, like the the objects could form. Mathematically, they could only form according to like these these fields, these potentials, like electromagnetism. They could only occur if these yeah. potentials are like in perfect balance, which is like just a mathematical probability. Like, but it's always going to happen. Is basically the quantum saying like because it's always going to happen there there's a problem because like physics is always like trying to chase chase itself it's always trying to like chase its tail it's like classical yeah. physics explains everything so you dive down classical physics but then you say no quantum and then you dive back up but then you realize because you you used quantum to build back up now you've basically tricked yourself to saying classical must be okay it's it's a weird loop because you have to use classical, as I showed you, to have this weird additional degree of freedom, which is positive or minus. You can call it whatever. But they also have a hidden degree of freedom, which is another positive, another minus, and a different positive and a different minus. You have different degrees of freedom, so you at least have six degrees of freedom. Therefore, you have at least six dimensions. It's But it's not dimensions. They're just... They're just like what we would call negative charges of each other. They're just opposites that are just always colliding. The universe is basically like particles just colliding against themselves. And that's why maybe they, they say there's like 11 dimensions because it could be just, just these six, you get me? The up, charm, mm -hmm. down, top, bottom. It could just be what we've already discovered, but just the, the antimatter version of it. That's that's what it feels like. Wow. I'm trying to zoom in. Okay. So. Uh, wow, that's very like technical. That's that's how I think often. Oh, yeah, but this explains... Okay, let's go back to the proof. So now you guys understand that. So I can't... I don't have to go f too much further. But that's just one of the consequences. Just one. I wanted to say th the more consequences of, of physics, fundamental physics. Because that exists, we, we realize that there could very well be these uh, classical-like explanations for, for quantum behavior that probably describe quantum behavior better or at least give us a framework to describe the models of quantum mechanics. Because quantum mechanics is, um, it's, it's, we're really good at it, but we have to have a model to fit the data. Like it's, if you want to make, make a good model, it's really hard. So, uh, yeah, because that exists, it says, because we know that we can actually solve uh, for particles collisions in, in a weak force and the standard model, because we know we can solve for them, we can actually theoretically predict the next reaction if you knew the, the state of the particle. So the double slit experiment is basically the problem is if we have a detector that tells us where it is, then the probability of something happening is guaranteed. But we want to keep the quantum behavior. How do we do that? Well, we have to sort of say that the probability should be equal, equal should be 50 50 but if you have to then trick the universe again and then put another like this is how to solve the quantum computing problem so to trick the computer into saying or the or the binary to think that it was not discovered basically the universe like the double slit experiment to preserve its interference to create uh, a quantum entanglement you're going to then have to put another 50 50 but that 50 50 has to actually be to an actual result it has to be one of your charges but it has to have a 50 50 chance of your charge to interact with it so it's not too much but by doing that whenever you know that your charge is there you know that it's there whenever your charge is not there you know that it's not there because you actually know that information you can track that so because you could theoretically track that, you have to look at the, like the third randomness 
to know what the first one is doing, theoretically. It's hard, but that's what would have to happen if you track so, these interactions. So the double slit experiment basically like, it, like proved that like nothing's actually there until we actually perceive it, like when we actually look at it, or? In a way, like that's what it could be seen as, but that's like we know as quant as a physicist that that's the simplistic, not likely explanation. Like it could, but it's probably not because the universe is very complicated. Okay. To sum it up, like what would you like think of it as like? Because I'm I'm still kind of confused on like the whole like concept of it. Um, it, okay, so let's try to read, because uh, it was right after I, I saw this video. It is communicated faster than light due to the particle wave duality of light, uh, etc. Fundamental particles, so you can consider, because you can consider uh, our universe, these three particles, up, down, and positive charge, because you can consider our universe yeah. these three particles, you can consider them as just bouncing pairs relative to some resistive surface. That resistive surface is is like weird fundamental energy, and we know this as as e, uh, e equals h f, which is the the Planck frequency, the Planck wavelength. Basically, it's like the time ticker of the universe. It's like always ticking. That's like the fundamental unit of time. H f h f yeah, but what is ticking is. And then, then set, that's equal to E. We know that's, that's energy. That's weird. We know that is equal to light. That's equal to energy. That's ticking. But now what is also equal to energy? MC squared. What's MC squared? It's mass per square wavelength unit of area of light. So E equals HF, you always radiate perhaps this equals HF is also equal to the uh, frequency of a photon or the energy of a photon. So E equals HF is equal to, and because we know all systems radiate, is equal to the energy that you are radiating. It's obviously very small as like a, as a unit of mass, but it's always there. You always radiate this energy. But we claim that it's small, but we know how many thermal watts we take as human beings. That is equal to the number of mass. That's mass taking away, being radiated away. And isn't that kind of fucking terrifying and cool? It's always fucking yeah. ticking at HF. E equals MC squared is ticking at E equals HF. I just wow. realized that right now. That's kind of fucking freaky. That's pretty freaky. Holy shit. And because I was tapping my hands, I felt that, dude. <laughs> I, I was I was just vibing there. That is a co that is a fucking the most devilish explanation of e equals MC squared I've ever fucking heard in my life. Ugh. That's kind of wow. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Not in a, like terrifying way, more of a like. That's how much way. energy everything is radiating, dude. Yeah. Like units of like watts. That's literally insane, man. Oh shit! But yeah, I mean, that's freaking crazy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Like, that's pretty cool. That's physics, man. That's why I really like doing physics, theoretical physics, like fundamental theoretical physics. Yeah. So, um, I had a question for you, actually. Let me, uh, let me try to recall it. I, I had this in my mind, like, a few days ago. Um. I agree, Spirit Falcon. We might be living inside a spark. So, so you think, uh, so you pretty much think infinite realities is, like, very, very possible, right? Like, do you think that's most likely what we're living in? Just an infinite loop of uh, different outcomes and realities? Yeah. 
or yeah do you oh think yeah yeah kind of yeah exactly so because we we think in very linear ways so electro electricity and electromagnetism uh they're they are defined along a, a right angle or a a the pointing vector basically electricity goes up magnetism goes to the left and that transmits energy in that direction we never really ask why in that direction. We're like, they just go in that direction because we learned that. And I just realized that no one ever asked why. And then every mathematician just says, well, that's just, that's just how, how, it, how the math just works. That is how it, how it goes. That just is how it goes. No one ever asked, but why does it just... You're telling me, yeah, yeah, but, but you, you, you're, you understand the calculus. Well, you understand the math. Maxwell told us that it's just, it's the math. There's nothing else there. There's nothing else there. That's, that's physics. Physics is just math, right? Because that's how physics ended after Maxwell's equations, after we got good. We got, we, we got hubristic. We thought we, we already solved everything. We thought we were done. We're like, and that's it. And that's the end of physics. You, you realize that, right? That's why we've yeah. been fucked and most every physicist doesn't realize it, doesn't think that way, and that pisses me off. They always think we're there, we're done. Because, but then I, I ask them, like, <laughs> then, 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 what are you researching? Well, I'm researching the the top field of physics, uh, it's forefront stuff, stuff we've never even considered. Yeah. Oh. And you're yeah. telling me like, we're done, basically, because I can't consider yeah. it. Yeah, well, I don't think there's an end, and I don't think we're anywhere near the end. <laughs> Exactly. And that's what I'm trying to say that if you use the revised weak force model, everything kind of works that way. If we, if we know it works that way with particle physics, we solved particle physics as they claim we have. Like we're, we're, cause they claim, if it's not possible within these lower energy regimes, if, you, if it's not possible with this top level gear, you're basically saying we're fucking done. You, you get me? Yeah. Like, but they, they, they claim, like, well, I don't understand what you're talking about. There's tons of work to be done in qu like quantum electrothermodynamics. We need to learn how to freeze yeah. the muon. Like, <laughs> 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 Why? We're done, then. If you really think that's the most important thing to be done yeah. with our money yeah, and our true. time. Yeah, well, yeah, we're nowhere near done. But um, do you think... Uh... Do you think it's possible that, like, uh, so you know, like, how in the Matrix there are, like, some people that are real, basically, and some people that are, like, within the Matrix, so pretty much, like, NPCs? Uh, Do you think that's pretty possible? <laughs> honestly, you know? yes, and that's kind of freaky. Because um, cause if you take everything as an orthogonal loop, is what this basically suggests, that there's there's a scheme of reality that's basically like what we can call depth for us. Um, for, the, for our physical dimension, it's mass, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. But for like energetic dimension, like, okay, remember what I told you? So it's really weird, but this is how uh, <laughs> physics works. So there's, there's, as I was saying earlier, there's the dimension of movement. Is your is your radial direction in space direction in space and then there's your momentum basically how fast you're going it just it's weird but these track everything you do in a two dimension in a three any dimension as long as it's spatial dimension and then yeah. there's e and time which is the energy per unit time and we say yes that accurately satisfies everything well because we proved in in the basic conditional that you all you need is two binaries and like a pair of binaries to create everything. If you have a pair of binaries, you can create everything. Just, just fundamentally. Like theoretically, you can create everything. And that's how... Um, that's this principle of energy, time, and momentum through, through space. Like movement through space. It's weird. Uh, that is pretty weird. Wow. <laughs> that's kind of weird to think about also like uh, 
this guy I was talking to the other day thinks that like I don't know, he thinks pretty crazy things. He he honestly thinks that like some things just kind of spawn out of nowhere. Do you think that's possible? Uh well I, I mean like maybe I, like I, a, a, a a rabbit or uh I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. It's <laughs> I think I, feel- I think that's mm-hmm. um that's something that's just not taken seriously, but I know what the phenomenalism is, whether it's something psychological, whether it's something that actually exists in the universe, who fucking cares? Yeah. Let's document it as a, as a human species, dude. Um as as a concept of spirituality. You know, like spirituality doesn't yeah. end where like it's mainstream, you get me? Spirituality is just yeah, for sure. human existence appreciating human existence and that's what people have fucking forgot yeah we don't teach that oh, anymore like we don't just appre- teach appreciation like I agree man and so I agree 100% what was the question again fuck so I was pretty much uh, asking you if like you think it's definitely possible for things to just spawn spawn out okay. of nowhere yeah yeah like, I, uh, I do think so no no absolutely like... it's random it's random i call it the, the randomness i call it the universe because the universe is fundamentally like binary systems like qu- like just quantum systems at, at some level because they were yeah. quantum systems at some level they were random i've never observed their system because i've never observed the system whether i knew the information before or ahead of time it doesn't matter it's now there right that's sort of the thing that Matt Feynman was like astounded by. How, how, why do we care about what's there in front of us? You're not going to know before you observe it. It's, you, you can spend all your time and your days in the universe, all the tricks and the schemes as, like a, as a government to figure out ways to observe data across mass and space and time. But yeah. it's always been there. If you can read it, then you, then you always knew it. Okay, like <laughs> if you can read it, then you yeah. always knew it. But you also True. then it's so funny because the universe then like laughs at you. It's like it's always been there. People will live their lives, but you're forgetting that people will live their lives. Why do you want to observe? Yeah, that's true. That's wow. That that's what physics is telling us. Physics is basically saying like, yeah, the way exists, but why the fuck do you want it? Yeah. That that's that's what it's doing, dude. That's what I'm wow, observing. That's... The universe is like, why, like, why the fuck do you want it? Because we, we, we discovered particle physics to, yeah. to make the bomb, remember? To split neutrons, yeah. to use these heavier ed- elements that we knew. Like, oh, there must be something interesting with these things. Because people die when they hold these quarks, when they hold these quartz materials. That's how it was in the 1910, like, before nuclear physics existed as a theory. They were like, people just die. Like, think about it. It was magic back then. Radiation was magic. We just discovered this as like a, as like a species like, of like this amazing rock that's really heavy. We, we, we now have chemistry. We can weigh it. We're like, we know it must be something amazing, but we don't know what is it because people die. Let's figure out more yeah. about it. Think about it. That's what we did as a species. No one ever fucking questioned Like, no one ever realizes that. We're like, there's this magic rock. Let's hold on to this. And we act like we're evolved. And we act like we're fucking uh, geniuses. That's how. That's who we were. That's what we did. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, wow, that actually makes a lot of sense. Wow, that's crazy. Mm. That's what bothers me as, like, as a physicist. No one fucking talks about this that actually knows physics. They're like, oh, yeah. no, no, you know, you just, everything is the way it is, and fuck you, you don't know shit because you're not a, you're not a physicist. Now, what the fuck was the degree for? Like, yeah. really? You, you, think, you think that only you with a fucking title can say Maxwell's equations mean this. It's math. I, you think I can't use math? <laughs> like, what? Is, is, this, you... is this racism? Like, what is it? Like, like what <laughs> is it? Why isn't this so just I'm formatting it. it it's 
why do fuckers want me to type it up? Oh, this is my official dissertation for the idea of that Maxwell's equations are not the end of physics, and that's my footnote in history. That's that's what people want right. to write. That's a safe paper. Yeah. One more, uh, one more question, and then I actually have to go. Um, it's all good. Have you heard about the? Uh, I'm sure you have. It's, I guess, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, machine in the world, and I guess they used it to kind of. Uh, kind of find out more about the big bang theory do you know yeah. about that machine can uh, you explain no. it to me I've, I've not heard about that but i think oh. i think at the end of the day i i actually know what they're doing oh my god i mean, i realize this is i'm getting okay I, I like to i believe in like the small spiritualism of deja vu so it's like you know i think yeah go yeah. along with it it's a good idea fuck it you know, so I think I swear yeah. at some point in my life I've heard this this concept. Like as a kid, I was like, "Well, what the fuck are they like?" I remember hearing, yeah, like a, on like a Discovery Channel documentary or something like that. They were simulating the early days of Big Bang. But then yeah. I was thinking about the particle physics and the and the quarks as a kid. For some reason, I just had like I actually understood it. Like when he's when like I saw Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about the up and the down quarks. For some reason, I like had like a like a flint. A crazy thought of just like, wait, there's something there. Like, yeah. And, and so, what was the question again? Because it, it was it was that. Now I can answer it. Uh, basically, just like uh, saying saying if you knew anything about the uh, the machine that they use. Oh yeah, to, uh... yeah. Okay, so yes, you need expensive and really difficult. Um, models to explain the interactions but it's basically as far as i we've seen it is a binary of the up down yeah and, and the uh, charm strange top bottom but we say it ends but actually it loops it loops in complexity to a higher degree it's like to a like you could call it a unit squared or something like it's just it's now twice as complex it's like one floor above you but you could have called the original one unit one so don't be afraid of the squared. Like, it, it, you, you were in the original unit one. So it just loops in complexity. So yes, they actually use this to simulate because we theorized that the Big Bang was actually, like, the point of, like, all infinitesimal reactions and universes were possible. Were plausible. Yeah. Which is basically the zero-one state where there was pure 100 energy. That, that was like, that's the actual beginning, Big Bang. The zero one is like, there's unbelievably amount of like high match energy. There's just particles, just there's pure infinity. Therefore, infinite stuff did exist. But wow. because that did exist, everything literally existed in the very beginning. And then time goes down. And then eventually, mm -hmm. eventually when that high, high, unbelievably high energy state cools down to, to such a low measly energy state, where atom, where light is no longer everywhere. Now there's actual particles, but it was just helium and you know it was just helium and hydrogen, and they're just there's so there's so much of it that everywhere is equally a star. That's the plasma era. Wow. And that's what they talk about. So it's like just just pure plasma. Like there was there was they say there was nothing before the plasma era. There was just energy. It's not just energy. That's like unbelievably hot, like ultraviolet white, like super intense, just, we don't even know, just particles, just everything there. And then there became plasma, which is something, but that's, that's unbelievably cold compared to the plasma. Yeah. And then the universe then descends to a lower energy state. And then the energy of state of plasma, then they're turned into actual space where we started exploding. Stars started exploding so much that the universe expanded from that just explosion era. And that's our universe. The shitty Big Bang. <sighs> Which is 14.8 billion years ago. And that's just a bubble. If you think about it, it's a rising bubble from the sea of the infinite. That just popped. Yeah. That's, that's honestly incredible though. Like... Yeah, and there's a direction. Well, yeah, we, that's why time goes forward, because you're a sea of particles just traveling in a forced direction. We're flowing away from infinity.
towards infinity at the same time. Or towards our own infinity. Wow, man. All right, it was nice talking to you, man. I gotta actually head out. I like to All good. Out. I'm See you, man. Late, but yeah, it was good, you know, catching up for a good few minutes, you know? Hell yeah, man. It's always interesting to, like, hear you talk. Like, I, I told my friend, like, next time I'm with him, like, we're gonna go live, and, like, <laughs> he's gonna listen to you <laughs> speak your magic, man. <laughs> sure, man. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Bro, all right, well, uh, take it easy, man. All right, man. See ya. See ya, man. All right, what's up, guys? Have you ever seen the documentary Dangerous Knowledge? No, I have not. Uh, you guys have any questions? It's sort of, I guess, like uh, at the end of the show, because I guess I did explain everything I, I wanted to. We explained the orthogonal nature of the universe. Basically that... Uh, because because the, the relationship of like this binary of the states exists that there's infinite we we know how linear algebra works there's an infinite combinations amount of combinations of objects well because of information theory that infinite amount of combinations allows for like a vector space where where like things can exist and that is the description of the big bang the mathematical like simplification and reductionism of the universe or the mathematics or the, the code of the universe is basically the Big Bang. And that's how you can theoretically solve any system of complexity. If you can understand its evaluation and its previous like past, you can then understand its complexity. And you can actually you can get a true answer from from uh, previous information. If you just know the conditions one time, you know all the conditions every time. It's weird. It's like a, it's like a weird math thing. It proves you can solve almost anything. You guys have any uh, questions? We can just uh, anything. I'm just drinking some water right now. speed um i i guess i will i guess i will i'll just post this video then yeah sure i'll post it man that sounds like a really good idea because you know you can just post of uh what's called tiktok lives all right i guess uh take care guys um i uh i'll just go a little longer i guess just a little this just guy wanted to finish this video <laughs> that was the point of this i guess oversimplification of entanglement that physicists would shut me down oh yeah okay, that's it. what i wanted to the say articles to, so i think the this first... script is uh, pretty interesting i was uh, watching uh science science file the ai on youtube i thought it was a pretty cool channel and uh, i'm just watching it and then i Glance. said some pretty interesting information things information would travel instantaneously regardless of distance which made someone very unhappy but before you go eliminating all lag from any multiplayer game, there's one thing to note. No actual information is being transferred. Once you measure the first particle spin, you instantly find out what the other ones is. But since the measurement result is random, you can't have any meaningful data transfer using entanglement unless you meet and communicate the results, which happens at below light speed. This is such a gross oversimplification of entanglement that physicists would shut me down. Like, he acts like what he just said was wrong. He did not say anything wrong at all. Like, he was he was pretty damn right. That basically, he's basically saying that he's laughing. I don't know whether he knows this or not, but he's laughing at, at physics or physicists claiming that... Let me get my notes. That there's, there's no way you can know anything. 
from uh, particle physics. So because we know that the reactions have like rules, as I've seen with the W plus, W minus, D down, D bar, D bar, oh, sh that should be regular D, that's going to be confusing, U bar, D, there, so that, and then there's also these, which is like, I don't know what they are, but they're just, I call them, they're the, those are the fucking neutrinos for some reason, but they're also not the neutrinos, it's weird, so that's a U, U bar, D, D bar. You can keep breaking the particles until the randomness create a new one. But we can keep measuring the particles until the randomness and make a new one. Alright, WT minus T. So these are the fundamental rules. So because of that, you can, uh, as I showed, that I solve different reactions. So you can solve reactions. Just, just please just take my word for now. Uh, I, you can solve reactions using this, and because you know what would happen in the reaction, so if you observe the beginning, if you observe beginning, you can predict the future. The future, if you observe the beginning, you can predict the future. Yeah. Because you know how it's going to react. Because you know that the particle physics always goes that way if it even happened so if you even observe it then you know how it went then you know the past so if you observe the beginning then you know the past if you observe to beginning then to the end If you observe the beginning, then to the end, you know the past. You can predict the future as well. So because we know you can predict the future, you can then watch it to the end to then be able to predict the past. So by having observed this, you can predict both ways. If you know it's paired, it's paired or it's association, it's associated reaction. If you know it's pair. It's paired reaction. Basically, you expect to observe some sort of U-bar and D-bar conjugation. So what that means is like you expect to see interactions. There has to be particle interactions. Interactions required. So yeah. I guess I'll just uh, leave that there. Uh, just get some water. See you guys.